Hello, today is Wednesday, October 28th, and today we come to the very exciting conclusion of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. So it's chapter 28, the last chapter in the gospel, and it starts out in a great way. Do you remember we left off our narrator and Paul, and they were shipwrecked. It turns out they shipwrecked on the island of Malta. The natives welcomed them. They have a very good experience with the natives. However, as they're building a fire, a viper, my translation says, or a snake of some sort, latches on to Paul's hand. And immediately the natives say, oh, he must be a murderer, because they knew they were all prison ships, you know, prisoners were swimming, swimming to shore. Um, and so they said he was a murderer because he survived the wreck, but he's still going to die from the viper. And then when he didn't swell up and he didn't fall over dead, they thought he was a god because he wasn't being punished. He, he was surviving this um, deadly snake, snake bite. This has been interpreted in different ways in, in churches and um all it is is a little miracle that he survived a snake bite. And he's Paul. So just let that be. It's good enough. So he survives the snake bite, and they have a good time with the natives. And they, they, they find an Alexandrian ship, and they set sail. Uh, it, there's a lot of details. It's still first-person plural. And eventually they get to Rome, where Paul is put on house arrest. So Paul is put on house arrest, and he's kind of like in the soldier's house, but he's able to, um, you know, not be in a prison. And it's a little bit better than just being on in a, you know, prison. So he's, um, he's there with the, um, allowed to live with the guard that's guarding him. And so um, after they got there, he calls together the Jewish leaders. He calls together the Jewish leaders because he um, wanted to talk to them about what he's being charged with in Jerusalem and why he's there in Rome. And so he has this conversation with them about that. And uh, it turns out that uh, he is, of course, trying to convert them. So some of them, they go for it and they believe him. Some of them don't. And so that they're divided about it and they sort of argue about it. So he came at them with the prophets, the law of Moses, the same way he normally does. It describes that here, um, that he's being, you know, apologist with them. And um, when they started to disagree with each other, some of them believe, some of them didn't, he quotes Isaiah. And this is a very, like, closing scene of the book of Acts. So I'm going to read it for you. Um, the prophet Isaiah said, Go to this people and say, You will indeed listen, but never understand. And you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull. Their eyes are hard. Their ears are hard of hearing and they have shut their eyes so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. And I know in the past this is used for very bad things against all the Jewish people um, by the Christians and and these sort of these theme that goes through the way Luke addresses the people that are against Paul and the Christians and but I, I think that we really need to look at this passage and really turn it on ourselves to think to think about and to see how it relates to us can we sometimes be the people who listen but never understand, who look but 
do not perceive. Who have dull hearts, have hearts that have grown dull, um, ears that are hard of hearing, eyes that are shut, and unwillingness to turn and just let God heal us. Because that's as far as we need to go. This passage, this very prophet, prophetic passage reminds me of the prodigal son. At that scene where the son, you know, he's gone off waywardly. He has looked but not perceived. He has listened but not understood. He's off on his own, and he, and, and he comes to his senses. He just comes to his senses, and he heads towards his father's house. And as soon as the father sees him, not as soon as he gets to the house, not as soon as he says, I'm sorry, as soon as the father sees him returning, the father runs towards him and embraces him. I really think that's where this passage is for us today, that we need to examine our own heart. We need to examine our own eyes and ears. Where are we listening? Where are we looking? How are we doing what we need to do to be like Paul, bring the kingdom into the world, to help people heal, to give them what they need? And to give ourselves what we need and to be responsive to the spirit at work. This has been such a great journey with you, doing acts in autumn. Um, it's been dark a lot. <laughs> Daylight savings is like two weeks too late this year. But um, it's been a great journey. I'm, I thank you for watching and I thank you for responding and sending me your thoughts. I'm um, not going to be doing daily scriptures um, any more this year and but I am going to be doing a Bible study class on the book of Job beginning in January if you'd like to join us for that it'll be virtual it'll be over zoom and I hope that you will sign up and be a part of that but thank you for being a part of this God bless you